Welcome back to the Bitcoin layer. Today's video is the bond market 101. We're talking the basics of the basics. I want to answer three questions for you guys today. Number one, what is a bond? Number two, what are U.S. Treasuries? And number three, what is duration? What is a bond? Let's set up a balance sheet on your screen. Assets on the left, liabilities on the right. Let's pretend this is a balance sheet of a company. A company starts with equity. This is somebody that has money and decides to start a business. They can use that equity to start projects. So put a project on the asset side. Now, with this project, the company can generate cash flow and that cash flow accrues back to the equity holder. Now let's introduce debt to the situation. Debt is also a liability. Debt helps the equity holders increase the number of projects that can generate cash flow for the business. Now the difference between debt holders and equity holders is that the debt holders only receive fixed scheduled cash flows in exchange for their money and the extra money all the extra money goes to the equity holders none of it goes to the debt holders so now let's look at the whole balance sheet we have debt holders and equity holders that have provided money to the business that money has been used to fund projects and those projects generate cash flow the cash flow that is owed to the debt holders goes there first and the rest of it left over goes to the equity holders so that's the difference between debt and equity from a corporate finance standpoint. So really the only difference between a loan and a bond is that a bond is considered a security. A security is basically an instrument that is regulated by the government as such. Bonds are both the debt of companies like we've just discussed, as well as governments, countries. So the next question we have is, what are U.S. Treasuries? U.S. Treasuries are debt obligations of the U.S. government. So these are also fixed cash flows that are going back to the debt holders. But the difference between Treasuries and corporate bonds is that Treasuries have the credit worthiness of the U.S. government, which if we look at market interest rates, we can see that the U.S. government is the most credit worthy borrower in the entire US dollar capital market. There are several different maturities of US treasuries that are issued, starting with one month all the way out to 30 years. So we have one month bills, three month bills, two year notes, 10 year notes, 30 year bonds, for example. Those are just uh, some of the treasury maturities that are issued across what we call the yield curve. The yield curve refers to all the maturities across time so when we think about the treasury yield curve, we're thinking about the three month bill all the way out to the 30 year yield and what the yields look like across maturities. Now US treasuries are the safest way to store US dollars. Why is this? Because all other forms of dollars are some sort of banking liability. Your checking account deposit that you think of as an asset is really the liability of that bank. So if the bank goes bankrupt and you have, let's say, millions of dollars in that account, that account can be wiped out. I'm going to give you an example of why U.S. Treasuries are such an important instrument in the monetary and financial landscape. Let's say that you win a $1 billion lottery. You have one month to pay the tax bill that is going to basically take half of your money away from you. So you have a billion dollar lottery, but thankfully you get to keep half a billion dollars and you owe half a billion dollars in taxes. What are you going to do with the $500 million that you have to pay in taxes in one month? What are you going to do with that money? Are you going to go and put it in your bank account? Or are you going to do something that might be safer than leaving it overnight at the bank? Now you might think that the bank is safe, but if that bank goes bankrupt next week, there is a chance that you never get your money back because that deposit is the liability of the bank. So you're going to take that $500 million and you're going to invest it in a fixed income security, likely a U.S. Treasury bill that has no default risk. 
So when you juxtapose a U.S. Treasury bill to a bank deposit, we can see why U.S. Treasuries have so much value. There's a healthy fear from the public of banking crises. And so what we see is investors, especially institutional investors, allocate to U.S. Treasuries in an enormous way in order to diversify away from all the banking risk that is out there associated with keeping deposit sort of instruments. What is the risk of U.S. Treasuries? For a one-month Treasury bill, not much, even on price. But for a 10-year Treasury note, for example, the risk is called duration. What is duration? Okay, so to answer the question, what is duration, we're going to have to do a little bit of math and show you a couple formulas and some numbers on the screen. The price of a bond is determined by summing up all the cash flows of that bond discounted to the present. Now let's put this formula on the screen. A bond is basically a loan, right? So what you're doing is you're lending, let's say $100, and you're giving $100 today away to the bond issuer. So the bond issuer collects that $100 today, and you give it away today. In this example, we're gonna pretend it's a four-year bond paying one time coupon a year of one and a half percent. So this bond, you are owed one and a half dollars every year, once a year, and then at the end of the bond, you get the hundred dollars back. So in this formula, P, which is the principal amount, equals 100. That's the money that you give today and the money you get back at the end of the bond. The coupon is $1.50. That is because when the bond is issued, this bond issuer promises to pay you a 1.5% coupon for four years. That is the stated bond that you are purchasing. You know that in advance. This is called a fixed cash flow, a fixed income instrument, right? That's why the bond industry is called fixed income. It's because it's associated with fixed cash flow instruments. The yield to maturity, this is the yield that we discount at. So we are pretending that the 1.5% paying bond is issued today and the yield today is 1.5%. So that's the starting yield that we're using here. The last variable is the time. So that is n in here in this formula and n equals 4. That means that the number of years it's going to take to pay this bond back equals 4. Now let's look at the cash flows of the bond to understand what is duration. Bond yields and prices move in an inverse way, and I'm gonna show you why that happens. Take a look at the cash flows of this example bond that we're talking about. So look at the top. We have the year that we are in, one, two, three, four, to show you the life of the bond. The second line has the cash flows associated with each year. So you can see that in the first year we get $1.50, same thing in the year two, same thing in year three, and the fourth year, we get $1.50 plus the original $100 back. That's why we get $101.50. Now, here's where bond math comes into play. Look at the bottom line. This is the present value of each cash flow. Now, what is a present value? Present value is this idea that the money today that you give is worth more tomorrow because of the time value of money. So I lend money today and you promise to pay me 1.5% per year for four years for the privilege of getting that $100 today. So that's the time value of money. Now, the way that bond math works, if we discount each one of these cash flows by 1.5%, so in the first year, we take that $1.50 and discount it by 1.5%, it's worth $1.48 today. The cash flow in year two, that's $1.50, is actually only worth $1.46 today because it's discounted twice, two years. Year three, that cash flow, the present value of the year three cash flow is today worth $1.43 because it's discounted three times. And then that last cash flow is worth $95.63. The sum of all four of these cash flows, guess what? It equals 100. That is because the cash flow that we are promised and the discount rate, which is 1.5% that we've used today, are the same. 
the way that the bond math works out is that the present value of all of the cash flows with one and a half percent yield discounted at one and a half percent equals 100 today. So if I own a treasury that promises to pay one and a half percent yield, but the yield in the market moves up to two and a half percent tomorrow, right? We're shocking interest rates up by a hundred basis points, one percent. What happens to the price? So let's look at the cash flows. The cash flows are still the same. 150, 150, 150, and 101, 50. But the present value has decreased. Year one, 146 compared to 148. Year three, it's down to 139 versus 143. Now we look at the sum when we discount all the cash flows, and we can see that the bond price, the present value of all the cash flows, has gone down by $3.76. Likewise, on the other hand, let's see what happens when rates go down by 1% or 100 basis points down to 0.5%. The cash flows, the present value of the cash flows, the sum of them goes above 100. Look how in year three, the present value of that cash flow is still worth 148 today. So you can see the power of discounting when we move interest rates up or down it changes the value of the bond. In this case, when rates go down by 1%, the bond goes up by $3.95. Let's note really quickly that the same rate move up changes the bond price by $3.95. Going down, it changes it by $3.76. So duration is in fact non-linear. That's called convexity. That's definitely a topic for an advanced bond class, not today. But today, what you need to understand is that duration is the sensitivity of the bond price to movements in interest rates. So that's what duration is. So we can see that this bond has a maturity of four, meaning it's a four year bond. And guess what? The price of the bond moves by about 4% for every 100 basis points move in interest rates. So if rates go down by 1% and this bond has a duration of four, the bond price will go from 100 to 104. Likewise, if rates go up by 100 basis points to 2.5%, this bond price is going to go from 100 to 96. And that's how bond prices move. They move because they have a duration, which is a sensitivity to the movement in interest rates. And that sensitivity has to do directly with how long that bond takes to mature, its maturity. So the longer the bond, the longer the duration, the longer the bond, the more interest rate sensitivity. Thanks for sticking with me for this Bond Market 101. We'll see you next time at the Bitcoin layer. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like this video. I wanna thank my sponsors, Zebedee and Voltage. I'm really excited about partnering with Zebedee. They are building what I believe is a really important user experience for people that are onboarding to the Lightning Network. Now, Zebedee is a company focused on the gaming industry, so how does that fit in with Global Macro? Well, you guys know how much I believe in the Lightning Network, and I believe that what Zebedee is doing is it's introducing the Lightning Network to people in a way that makes them understand why instantly transacting Bitcoin is so important. So check out our Lightning address, the Bitcoin layer at zebedee.gg. Go download their new wallet for a great first Lightning Network wallet and get your own Lightning Network address. I'm proud to have Voltage as the sponsor of my Substack. Voltage is powering businesses to be able to run their own nodes, both Bitcoin and Lightning Network. I'm really excited about working with Voltage because I believe they are powering some of the most important businesses in the Lightning Network ecosystem already. Go check them out. Thank you.